listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Cougar Town After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Cougar Town After Show. Hey there, Cougar Town fans, Cougar Townians, Cougar Towns people. What is this? What is this music? I thought this was going to be the jellyfish song. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is like Valkyries, some man. very intense Ride of the Valkyries music for what is normally a very like pleasant Cougar Town after show here on AfterBuzz TV. Lots of little surprises from our wonderful engineer, Stephen Lemieux. Thank you for that wonderful surprise. Shaking us into alertness. Uh, hey gang, so we're doing this Cougar Town after show here on AfterBuzz TV, talking about season five, episode four, A Trip to Pirate's Cove. <laughs> I am Matt Lieberman. Joining me on the panel, of course, all season long, the fantastic and talented Miss Virginia Reyna. Hey guys, how you doing? And the lovely and hilarious Miss Jenna Couture. Hello! Yes, uh, so lots to talk about. Great episode this week, but then also I, we have a new uh, feature on the Cougar Town after show. We do. That I'm very, very proud of. Uh, one of our hosts here, Tiana Hobson, had the idea for it. Um, I was like kicking myself that we hadn't thought of it earlier. Um, but of course, uh, if you watch Cougar Town, you love wine. You love that they drink wine. They certainly love wine. Uh, so here on the Cougar Town show, we are also going to be drinking and reviewing a wine Woo. a week. Uh, so what we're drinking tonight, we are drinking the Benefactor Cellars Cabernet Sauvignon 2012. It's a southeastern Australian wine. It is quite nice. It's I love it. It's four... And I'm not a cab person. I'm I not a huge it. cab person either, what? but this is very, very I'm nice. I'm a Merlot girl. I like, really? I like Syrah. Syrah is my grape. Um, but this is a, it's a great wine. It's only $4.99 at your local Trader Joe's. Dang. Highly recommended. Uh, go, go, go. Pick some of it up. So uh, as for nice the... Nice packaging. Yeah. You know. Festive. Fun and festive, kind of a Dia de los Muertos thing going on. I like it. Um, but we got a lot going on this week. We've got Buccaneer Week coming to Gulf Haven. It's a big deal. Um, all of the snooty snoots and hoity toits come out of the woodwork uh, because it's so important to the local economy. All of these tourists come because they like pirates, they like beaches, they like beer, they like dirty cakes, <laughs> and you know it's. I'm especially a big fan of the dirty cakes. Yeah, yes. I wanted to see a dirty cake. I was really hoping I will make one for you though. I've got dirty really? cake pans. Maybe I'll make one for next. That would be great. I do too. Big penis cake. Yeah. I have a penis cake. Yes. I did my sister's bachelorette. Uh, right? will, will they be <laughs> cream filled penis cakes? Mine was a cream filled penis. It was penis a cream filled cake. penis cake? Mine yeah. will have lots of cream on top of it. Okay. <laughs> Well, all right. So you've got a yours. That's just you know. That's not clean. You should just you should clean that penis cake <laughs> off no, before you present to it to people. No, I wanted to make a dirty penis cake. Okay, fine. Yeah. No, I thought maybe you know on TBS we might just get like a little bit of something, something just with some blurred out something, some something, somethings. I know. You know? Well, they we got... gave us a little something, something at the end with Jules going down on the cake. That's true. But we didn't get any sort of visuals. I would have liked a visual. We got a visual of Lori and. Uh, um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking? Lori, Lori and Travis in having sex shower. in the shower. Yes, yes. We, yeah. we had like wet, it was wet. They were naked. We could see it. Jules we grabbed his see erect it. We saw, we saw we, little bits of pieces. We saw hands on wall. We yeah. saw legs. We saw feet. Yeah, it filled you know. in most of the blanks. Okay, so we could have used some like close-ups of like frosted legs and arms yes. and, you know, bras being thrown off. We could have used at least a ball or two. Okay, fine. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll get into <laughs> balls in a minute. Okay. Uh, I would like to start... By talking about uh, one of the positive things that came out of Buccaneer Week is uh, Charming Ellie Chelly. came out of retirement. Ellie wasn't even sure that she was still alive inside of Ellie. Ten this, years. Yeah, ten it's years. It's a long time to not be charming. It's true, but it's worked very well well for Ellie. 
uh, but she's never had to call upon it. And Andy, you know, he's like, hey, if you want to be able to keep drinking in public, as she's able to do as the mayor's wife, you know, walk around stealing wine bottles, you know, drinking her glass in public, then she better charm the pants off of these, you know, awful rich ladies who are so mean and so crass and think that every the world belongs to them. Uh, but instead, she turns them into her little teeny team. They're all having teenies and having a great I know, time. She was super charming. Did you like it? I did. You like Chelly? I loved Chelly. I, I was did. very was pleasantly a, surprised. It was a nice relief from the regular Ellie. I Not know. that I don't love Ellie and her wit usually, but I liked the Chelly. It was refreshing. I liked seeing that it was in there, even if it was kind of fake. You can't completely fake something like that. Like there is an impulse in her that understands what to say in those moments. Mm -hmm. Well, I think with certain people like that, though, you kind of just have to, you know, bring that out, even if you don't want to. And, you know, she did a good job of just sucking it up, being a good wife, mm -hmm. you know, but kind of like Jules's fake date. Kind of yeah. like Jules fake date. Had a lot of faking season. it this season. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of faking it. Uh, but here's the thing. We liked Chelly more than Ellie. So did Jules. And that's not OK. That's the thing. She introduces Jules as like the light of her life, my rock. She's wonderful. She's the premier real estate agent. And Jules is like, I've never felt this kind of love from her in all the I years know, we've I actually been friends. I think she was friends. super flattered and, you know, surprised. I don't blame her for loving it. Sure. It's flattering. It is flattering. But it's a problem when you're friends with someone for a long time. You see a side of them that they don't even like and you prefer it to the actual person it's not okay because then you start comparing the friend you have to the idealized fake version of your friend mm -hmm. and you know has anything like that ever happened to you in your life where you have a friend uh who starts acting differently like maybe they just uh got together with someone and they're super happy or they just left the horrible person they were with that you didn't like well and... i think that's just girls i mean <laughs> i think girls just go through that you know it's girls is yeah. it just girls? No, I'm sure guys are like that too. I feel that way. I feel like I've had friends who like, you know, they break up with someone. I'm like, oh my God, my friend's back. And then they're like, shut up. I'm still in love with that girl. And then they get back together and then my friend's gone again. That or, sucks. you know, vice versa where someone like makes them better, like really brings out the best qualities in them. And then they go back to being a shit, you know, once they're <laughs> be once they've been broken up with. You're like, when you break up again, I'm out. Yeah. Don't come back. Don't come back until you have a girlfriend again. I like having you as a couple friend. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, it happens. But obviously, Ellie, very insulted by the fact that Jules prefers Chelly to Ellie. Who wouldn't be insulted? Um, and uh, she starts kind of throwing it in her face. You know, like, just do it. Like, I love that scene when they were at the window and Ellie's saying all these very nice things to Jules. She's like, the words are nice, but the voice is mean. <laughs> that, that was awesome. That was probably one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, thankfully, though, they, they make up as they do. Um, and now Jules will get the best of both worlds. Chelly to her, Ellie to everyone else. Everyone wins except Grayson. Grayson never wins. <laughs> Grayson never wins. But he has some of the best lines. He cracks me up. Yeah. Yeah. I think he wins just because he's so handsome. What were what were you, what was your favorite line this week? Uh, friendship doesn't save you from jellyfish. I think that was what he was saying. He's mm -hmm. like, this just goes to show you that friendship <laughs> does not save you from jellyfish because they when they were all getting attacked. Yeah. And then I liked his uh, Olay story. Olay. He was funny. He's got a voice on him. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's a singer. I mean, he is, but he just you know you know he could go to those octaves. Yeah. <laughs> I liked it. I don't know. I just feel like he's always getting the, I don't know, the raw end. Yeah, he gets he gets the short end of the stick. Yeah. Everyone picks on him. His eyes are so tiny. I love his tiny eyes. I don't get don't it. Do you think he's good looking, Virginia? Oh, absolutely. Oh no, we we've established that both of you think <laughs> we, that Grayson is very good looking. Yes, Grayson. We if you want to come into the show, you know, we would love and that. be fawned over <laughs> while I just treat you like a human being and not a piece of meat. You can sit right here between me and Jenna. Fine. <laughs> You'd be like, "There's actually not another chair. You'll just have to share." <laughs> yes. Laugh. Oops. Yeah. And you'll just trade. Yeah, There's only one chair, yeah. and the other one is just going to stand while the other one sits on. There Josh another, Hopkins land. Yeah, I know. There was another good line that he had. He had a couple of good ones. I thought he was making that story up to Lori about the 
hooligans to try to... You thought he was making it up? I thought he was making it up to mess around with her, but it didn't sound like it was fake. I didn't feel like he was making it up. It sounded like it it really did I think he was jealous. I felt like he was jealous of her business. He was jealous of her success because he remembers the success he had while the hooligans were, you know, coming to Gray's Pub, but he knows also how it ends. Like, that's the thing is like, you know, it's a double edged sword. It's you'll be successful, but it'll bite you in the ass. Mm -hmm. But I thought it was a really good, you know, overall message that like you don't have to sell out to do something, you know, like sometimes you do, though. Occasionally. (laughs) But, you know, like I I just thought it was a really good overall message that like, you know, she can sell her cakes to kids. Like, you know, and it was the cake that she loved. The butterfly cake. That was adorable. It's beautiful. It's a very pretty cake. It's a wonderful story. We're going to get to it in a minute. So also, sorry, Matt. <laughs> no, it's okay. Uh, we, we take it easy here at the Cougar Town Podcast. I think the wine just kind of kicked in. Oh, it's okay. It's kicked in for me, too. We've got real wine. People who crunches. listen to multiple shows of mine will recognize how relaxed I sound. It's very, <laughs> very different. Normally, I'm far more amped. Um, not that I'm not amped about this episode. <laughs> Our but engineer is agreeing I'm just over having, there. I'm just having... <laughs> A great time, spending wonderful time with you and with our listeners or viewers. I'm just going to talk real quick about iTunes, and we're going to get back to this discussion. <laughs> Is that all right? Let's go. Let's oh, do it. I feel talk iTunes. I am a silk pillow of a man right now. I am comfortable. <laughs> I am expensive. <laughs> I am expensive. I am everything that I want to be. <laughs> so here's the thing, folks. Uh, we so love, so we <laughs> love, love, love Cougar Town. We love doing this after show. We talk about it every single week and it's all for you it's a free podcast you can stream it on any of your devices it's kind of amazing technology is bringing us all together to pound some grape and talk about a great tv show now you get this show for free that's a fantastic boon it's a service it's wonderful if i could thank every cow that has ever given me milk i would do so this is just because that's the person that i am but you can't do that, but you could thank us for doing this wonderful after show. How can I do it, you may be asking. I'm going to tell you. We don't want any of your money. We just want a little bit of your time. Go to iTunes. Slap the show with a rating. We love five-star ratings. How, how on earth could we come up with a wonderful, as wonderful a feature as wine reviews on a show with so much wine in it if this wasn't a five-star show? That's just how I'm feeling. That's just how I'm thinking. Let's just live and be together like the ocean. It's wonderful. You heard it straight from the silk pillow. Yeah, from the silk (laughs) pillow of men. Uh, So slap the show with a rating. Give us a review. We'd love your support. It really, really, really makes a difference. I know I say it every week, but it really, really does. We want to be up there in the ratings. We want to be the number one show on AfterBuzz TV. We want to be the number one Cougar Town show on the web. Not that hard. If you don't have (laughs) iTunes and you want to support the show, you may be asking, how do I do that? Here's how. You email info at AfterBuzzTV.com. Our bosses read the emails. They will love to know that people are loving the Cougar Town show. There aren't that many comedies being recapped on AfterBuzz TV. I'd love to start a whole wave of wonderful comedies being recapped on it. It's all about it's all about the audience checking in and letting us know what do you love, and I hope that you love Cougar Town. Great. Okay. Back to the show. Back to the show. Yes. So, hey, gang, we've got Bobby going surfing. Andy isn't able to come watch him and give him his sto- his scorecards like he usually does. Bobby's upset because, you know, how am I supposed to know how well I'm doing at surfing if you're not there to show me how good I'm doing with these scorecards? I'm like, oh, sweet. I love their friendship. I love their friendship. Yeah. You so know. warm and fuzzy. It is. Well, it, it, to me, it's almost like it's the actualized male friendship where... All guys who like really, really love each other, like deep bromances, Mm -hmm. they don't always go all the way like outwardly with the affection. They don't confidence dance each other out the door. I love that. It was a good, it was a good episode. Yeah, especially for the two of them. And, um, you know, they don't always show scorecards at the beach. These are the things that they would like, they would love to do if they felt a little more secure with themselves. And these guys are so secure in who they are and what their friendship is that they feel safe to just pal around and be buds. And I love it. It's great. Do you have a bromance? I so do. You do. Oh, you do? Do you do these things? Uh, not quite as much. Do you have best friend it, beanies? But, but we... Does we'll, it make you want to? We'll dance. We'll dance, you know, t- we'll dance uh, and we'll do karaoke. And we have lots of weird in-jokes and lots of references. 
And, uh, you know, who would I be without this bromance? That's why I respond so much to the Andy Bobby story. So imagine my, you know, disappointment when they're kind of having a tiff this week. I know. That was so sad. So, oh, I was heartbroken when he heard that email or the, or the voice not even voicemail it was, like a, it was they all had the, walkie talkies yeah, they kept no they kept their phones on on speaker oh, that's all right. day long so they could hear each other all the time which is like you know like cute and immature it's like what boys would do with walkie talkies and uh unfortunately you know to, when andy is kowtowing to these you know rich guys roger frank who you know is one of the trustees here in gulf haven he says some mean stuff about Bobby. And Bobby's, you know, justifiably upset. He gets attacked by this jellyfish. He comes around yelling, there's a giant killer jellyfish. And we kind of have like this weird Jaws parody on our hands. You know, as uh, back in Jaws, when they have this giant shark, the mayor doesn't want to close the beaches because it'll kill the tourism to this small town. And now we've got the same thing with this giant killer jellyfish. And I loved the scene in Gray's Pub when they've got the, uh, the chalkboard uh, and it's straight out of Jaws with the rendering of the of the giant jellyfish. And it's like, you know, come on, Mr. Mayor, we have to make a decision. And, uh, you know, thankfully, ultimately, Andy sides with his best friend. Yep. He's so that that was the only thing he could do to redeem himself. Yeah, that was it. And to, he did it. And I was so happy. I didn't think he was going to do it. Yeah. But he got right in that water right alongside him shirtless as the day he was born. <laughs> and uh, they got stung by a bunch of jellyfish and the friendship was reborn. It was re-solidified. The stormtroopers went back to the Death Star. That's yes. what I love about <laughs> Cougar Town. Happy endings. Happy endings. It always works out in the end. It does. You know, it's it's a very sweet show about uh, good people and good wine. Um, I feel like it could almost be a drinking game. There was so much wine this time. There was like three or four different... There were three or four different scenes. There have been episodes with more wine. More, lots more wine. Yeah, there was the episode where they played wine pong um there's oh that would be so bad that would be so weird i would not like that i don't think yeah i feel like the 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 wine would get contaminated by the plastic ball you know (laughs) yeah no beer pong is a gross game we won't get into it here this is not the forum um to discuss it but um you know i like the the andy bobby storyline i'm glad it got resolved uh i loved how grayson cheered them up at the very end with an ole 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 yes Um, very very sweet thankfully ultimately no huge jellyfish not even a huge cloud of jellyfish that looked like one giant jellyfish just a bunch of small jellyfish um and thankfully no one else was harmed and buccaneer week was saved buccaneer was a was success yes um lori on the other hand she's having issues with her business she opened up her lori keller's crazy cakes a couple seasons ago inside of Jules's know, real estate office. We don't get a office. lot of scenes in her bakery. Yeah. Well, it's not even a full bakery. It's like a case, a baker's case at Jules's real estate office. So I'm like, how do people even know that it's there? Because it's a real estate office. I don't know. I don't know either. These are the questions. These are the questions, Virginia and Jenna. I want firm answers. I okay? feel like this is... Or this episode, they had the most like work related stuff. Yeah, you know, everybody was actually every, working yeah. in this episode. We got to see Andy, except for Jules. Jules is like never working. Does she not even? I mean, I could see her names was still on the. Yeah, well, I mean, she was helping. Uh, she was helping those folks out with their paint swatches last week before oh, the I wedding, know. and they were reoccurring again. Mm-hmm. She came back this week. I know, looking for a pregnant naked cake. Uh huh, and then she wanted to add somebody. Yeah, she wanted cake. to add somebody, and she didn't have to be black. That was just her preference. That was hilarious. That yes. was a good one. Yeah. Um, Lori, she's having trouble selling her cakes. This is her passion. No one's coming. No one's buying. You know, everyone's coming to Gray's Pub to drink because pirates, I guess, don't eat cake. Uh, doesn't keep on the high seas. And instead, they come in seeking to get all their dirtiest fantasies displayed in frosting on top of a buttercream cake. Or a yellow cake, or a good old-fashioned devil's food. We we didn't really get into the particulars. But Tom comes in looking for a cake for this bachelorette party. Which, why is he getting the cake I for a bachelorette know. party? I don't know. I don't even know where he met those people. Yeah. Very, very confusing. I guess at work. 
you know. But why was he invited to a bachelorette party? I don't know. He probably got suckered into it. He probably, I don't know. He's a nice guy. Oh, how funny was it when Shelly introduced him to the group of women I know, as so nice. the mad ma- as the John Hamm of <laughs> Gulf Haven. Yes. And I think he kind of, uh, he kind of, I don't know if I can say this on the show. He kind of climaxed a little bit. I think he did. In his drawers. I think it's safe to say that. I think it's an appropriate thing to say. I feel like that's how he played it. I feel like I said it in a way that is non-offensive. Spontaneous orgasm, maybe? Yeah. Like, I felt like there was, like, a... Just like, oh! Flirting in it. Yeah. uh, yeah. And he nearly fell over. Yeah. Like, Um, oh, oh, yeah. I see it. I... We're on the same page. I think... We're on the same page. It's stuck to another page. We're moving on. (laughs) We're assuming that we can't read it. We've taken it to the next couple pages. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out where the book is going as we move forward. Um, Yeah, so she's making all these dirty cakes. She feels gross, but she's making a lot of dough. She's even brought out her old double D stealing bra, shoplifting bra that used to be able to fit a whole ham and a DVD box set in, Um, which, like, she shouldn't she should compliment herself a bit more i mean like it would take a slightly larger bra to fit all that stuff in there because busy phillips is a gifted actress with nice curves nice curves yeah that's entirely meant in 100 percent respect yes (laughs) um yes so ultimately she sticks to her guns pride gets the better of her she kicks all the dirty weirdos out of her out of her shop and she goes back to making normal cakes, and she has that wonderful moment with the little girl who buys the butterfly cake that she mentioned earlier. Oh, I love that cake. It reminded me of, like, a childhood cake that I had. It and took I, me back. It made me want to make a cake. And I'm amazed, because like she's it. like, that's the first cake I learned how to make. I'm like, you didn't start at just a simple round cake? Well, that's, like, the first fancy cake she learned how to make. Okay. Come fine. on, it's girl talk. I mean, it's just the molds, you know? Yeah. You just true. pour it in there. You just pour it in the mold. Well, yeah. thanks for ruining it for everyone at home that thought it was magical and sweet, Virginia. <laughs> Sorry. It carved out. <laughs> yeah. Apparently not. No. You can just get a mold and everything's fine. No, it's true. You're right. <laughs> you'll, you'll see next week with our penis molds. Yay. I know. Penis cake. Yeah. Are we going to get like one... Uh, Angel food cake, one devil's food cake, or what are we? What are we Ooh, gonna that do? That sounds good. Are we gonna get a red velvet one, or is an that kind of gross? Cake, once you like an think angel about food cake penis. Yeah. He's just delicious. He's just and very strawberries. Yeah, he's just very pale, and I guess he's got some kind Ooh, of blood I'm infection because he's got <laughs> strawberries coming out of his dick. Then that's not good at all. Mm-hmm. That's With a me. little cream cheese frosting. Maybe just mm-hmm. an angel food cake. Why is cream. why is what's going on inside of his dick souring and becoming tangy cream cheese? <laughs> what kind of infection does he have? Jesus. See, Cougar Town fans, these are the questions that we need to be answering. We need some cake ideas. What do you guys think? Yeah, reach out to us on Tell YouTube. Tell us what kind of cake you want us to Twitter. make. I'll make it. I'll make the cake. Jenna will make the cake. We'll display it here. We'll drink some fresh wine and we'll have a lovely I don't know if cake. strawberries are really appropriate, but if you guys give me the go ahead, I'm going to do it. I say it's fine, but then he obviously has some kind like, of infection. I That would be sad. Yeah. It would be a sad penis cake. It would be sad. Um, Possibly we're not. Sore. We're gonna get. We're gonna get off of this topic. <laughs> we're gonna get off of the the topic of open sores on our penis cake, and we're gonna get back I to I the show. I don't know how I got there. Uh, you, I don't know how either, but you you certainly you dug right in, and we'll dig into this cake next week. So um, I want different cake ideas. Other buccaneer buccaneer week stuff going on. We had uh, some pirate jokes at the top of the episode. Um, you know, uh, Jules says, what's a, what's a pirate's favorite kind of movie? Arr. Any movie rated R. Yes. Uh, and Grayson is so excited to throw in his on, on in the mix and he, he can't think of a joke and it's really embarrassing. <laughs> oh, you see, he's, uh, he's Jack Sparrow, but it's not Johnny Depp. It's, uh, he's short. It's like he's almost Grayson, you know, because he's he's almost the guy. Like he did, he's almost the model, almost yeah. the actor, and then just—it's totally no. That's actually a very good point. It's kind of what he's fuels like Grayson. Grayson. He's the almost man. He is the almost man. That sucks. You know, That's so sad. It is sad what? because he is so hot. He should totally be the guy, not the almost guy. Yeah, he has so much potential. But you're right. He's almost a model, but it never happened. You know, mm-hmm. he's. Almost the 
you know, bar o- owning chauvinist, but he's too much of a softy to be that guy. You know, he's almost the life of the party, but he's too much of a wet blanket to like let it stick. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants him let to it be. Stick. Oh, we. No, Dickie. we moved past that. Yeah, I just, I we just like moved the third past time I heard cream sticky. cheese frosting and stuck together pages, and you brought it back, <laughs> Jenna. <laughs> I just Jenna. keep hearing sticky and I'm confused. Oh, don't be confused. <laughs> I think it's the it's the most natural thing in the world. It's not confusing at all. <laughs> um, yeah, so what, what else we got to talk about? We had Buccaneer Week. Um, Roger Frank, I'm trying to remember uh, the name of this guest star because oh, yeah. it's, oh, it's, it's driving me crazy. He was... Uh, the last thing I saw him in was this terrible movie called uh, FDR American Badass, which was like purposefully like a schlock movie about a version of Franklin Delano Roosevelt who was ma- given polio by werewolves. By you a werewolf watched the most guy. interesting movies ever, Matt. Thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't call that the most interesting movie ever. You always watch interesting movies to reference back to. Well, yeah, Marwin Call is far yes. more interesting than FDR yes. American Badass. American Badass is not interesting. It is really, really weird and bad. If you want to see a really weird, weird movie, you can watch that. It's on Netflix. Um, Grayson, we talked about the soccer hooligans. We got a nice callback to that at the end of the episode as he's doing olays and these two soccer guys walk in off the street like, huh, huh, is, is it soccer bar, soccer bar? No. No, it's not a soccer bar. Get out of there. Get I out know. of there, hooligans. I know. And then what did, uh, what did Lori get called? Did she get called a slut cake or a cake mm. slut? Cake slut. Ugh. And she was like, I've never been called a slut in a negative way. Mm. And I'm like, what? how positive can in the word be, I guess? Mm. It's all in the way you take it. That's true. Or oh, the tone. Gross. <laughs> what? <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Is that it with the tone, you know, because yeah. they were saying earlier. Mm-hmm. You can say nice things, but if the way you say it's mean. It's true. If the voice is mean, then you don't want to be a part of that. Travis was around this week. He was a photographer. It's weird how they've kind of laid off of Lori and Travis. Well, like they haven't really been seen together. They haven't been making out. They started out really strong, and then it's like they lessened. Well, no, it. we had it last episode. They're kind of going uh, every bit. other episode. You know, we had a lot of it in the first episode. But they should be together, seen together, at least once an episode. Well, he came into her, her, her shop. You know, he was checking on her. They yeah. weren't, like, kissing. It was her job. You know, she was at work. Yeah, but still, I think like, he would have it. gone in and, like, given her a kiss. kiss. Yeah. You know, some Kisses are really natural. It's and true. And I feel like sometimes Jules and Grayson don't kiss very much. You know, they're, they've got to kiss more. They're older. They and don't kissing. don't always have the I, inclination. No, I think you should kiss. I think that Lori and Travis should be kissing more. They're two. They're two. They're both the, in they're, the prime of their life. They're in the honeymoon stage. Yeah, they're they just, shouldn't be able to sh- keep their hands off each other. Bingo. Bingo. Well, maybe it's Didn't it's mean the to say bingo. maybe it's the producers. <laughs> it's the producers reacting to you know how they felt watching. The first episode get filmed and and the third episode you know like it's still a little weird i think we did say that last week how we were still a little bit uncomfortable about it yeah you know so maybe they you know saw some kind of feedback and they're like okay we'll tone it down a little bit because no but these were already recorded before we got the feedback well no i mean you know you can still get feedback from the network from the studio they can still you know it's one thing to write it another thing to see it mm. so We'll we'll see more of it. I'm sure we will see a lot more of it. Oh, well, how as is the Lori supposed to get pregnant? If they're not even really kissing. Oh my gosh! My she prediction can get pregnant is not going to come true. Screen off screen. This is an off screen baby. I want a Cougar Town baby. On Cougar Town, all babies are <laughs> off screen all babies. the time, including Ellie, especially Ellie and Andy's baby. I know. I'm so glad he made a cameo this season. Mm-hmm. I I thought it was really funny. Uh, one line that just stuck out to me. Was like, um, you know, you're so. Uh, Ellie was like, you're so right. My son is half Cuban, but I agree they should all go home. Um, <laughs> and she's just like putting up with these crazy women who she ultimately gets to dismantle after she drops the whole Chelly bit, which is great. We didn't even get to see her dismantle that. I know. I was really hoping we'd get to see a little bit of that. Me too. But I mean, you only have 22 minutes per episode. We can only fit in so much gold. So true. It's true. Okay. I think it's time. For predictions. 
That's right. Your After Buzz <laughs> TV predictions. Okay. Uh, Virginia, thoughts, predictions next week. What do you think? I think there'll be more drinking. More drinking. Definitely more drinking. <laughs> more drinking. I foresee us continuing on with the penis cake. Uh, okay. What else? I think I'm hoping for a little more romance next week. No, it's a sitcom, but I'm hoping for a little more affection so Lori and Travis can have a baby and she can have the baby before the season ends. Only have a few more episodes left. Okay. It's only 12, 13 episodes this season. So we're in four, so she's going to have that baby so she can have it and they can fast forward and have the baby. I hate to break it to you, but I don't think if she's not already pregnant on the show... She's not going to have the baby by the end of the season. Nine Sometimes months. Sometimes they like fast forward in episodes and they'll do like next episode five years later. They've never done that on this show. <laughs> They've never done that, but I'm just saying it would make things a little bit interesting. Okay. It would make it a lot of bit interesting to <laughs> go five years down the line, age everybody up and find out what happened. Maybe they could just do nine months later. Sure. Nine months later and just all of a sudden there's baby. a baby. Travis is a father freaking out. Yes. Okay. That's your prediction? Change approved. Very, change approved. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Um, What am I feeling? What are uh, you feeling? What, what do I'm... you really feel like it's going to happen? Listen to your insights. Yeah, what's on my mind, Grapes? What's on your mind? Yeah. <laughs> that's, I, uh, that's a wine Yeah, that was the only thing on my mind, was yeah. more drinking. Was, was more grape. <laughs> Um, you know, I think I do want to see some more romance on the show. You know, we see Jules and Grace and always resolving issues within their marriage, but we very rarely ever see them, you know, really trying to like bring some spice back to it. You know, that, yeah. that when could he be made nice. out with her and they were getting kind of crazy in front of Ellie, I think uh, mm -hmm. that was cool. And like they talked about their sex life in the pot in the mm -hmm. season opener. Um, and they gave a little tongue. That's what yeah. we're talking about. And uh, I'd love to see Bobby, you know, get someone in his life again. You know, it's been a while since uh, Sarah Chalk in season three. Um, you know, we should see him getting some romance. He deserves it. He's a sweet person. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Virginia, where can the people find you? You can find me at Virginia Reina. All right. And Jenna? I'm on Twitter at Jenna Time Tweets. Okay, and you can find me on Twitter at Matt Lieberman. That's M-A-T-T-L-I-E-B-E-R-M-A-N. You can also find me all over the place here on AfterBuzz TV. Uh, I'm doing Almost Human, Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Helix on Sci-Fi. We got Banshee on Cinemax. Sherlock for one more week. Just started Lost Girl on Sci-Fi. It's a Canadian show. It's crazy. It's about a succubus who's into girls and guys, and she's kind of a sex detective. I don't know. It's a, a very sex detective? It's a very weird show. You would like it. Jenna. I would love it. Yeah. Um, so tune in for that. More shows this spring. Um, and uh, oh, also two more things. If you love live comedy and you are in the LA area, you can come see me perform at the IO West Comedy Theater doing sketch comedy as a member of DJ Fawcett. First Sunday of every month at 9 p.m. Next show, February 2nd. So you can watch the Super Bowl and then come out and see us. See some great live comedy. And also if you're in LA and you love bad movies like FDR American Badass, you can come to I host a bad movie night event. Uh, the last Thursday of every month at the new studio and cafe on Melrose Avenue. It starts at 8.30 p.m. this Thursday, January 30th. We're screening The Wicker Man with Nicolas Cage. It's going to be a trip. I know. They're cutting me off. <laughs> I love you all. Have a great Cougar Time week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.